Gospel service this morning is from the Book of Common Prayer. <clears throat> so we say together, Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive them that trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Almighty God, unto whom all hearts be open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of thy Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love thee and worthily magnify thy holy name, through Christ our Lord. Amen. God spake these words and said, I am the Lord thy God, thou shalt have none other gods but me. Lord, have mercy upon us, and incline our hearts to keep this law. Thou shalt not make to thyself any graven image, nor the likeness of anything that is in heaven above, or in the earth beneath, or in the water under the earth. Thou shalt not bow down to them, nor worship them. For I, the Lord thy God, am a jealous God, and visit the sins of the fathers upon the children, unto the third and fourth generations of them that hate me, and show mercy unto thousands in them that love me, and keep my commandments. Lord, have mercy upon us, and incline our hearts to keep this law. Thou shalt not take the name of the Lord thy God in vain, for the Lord will not hold him guiltless that taketh his name in vain. Lord, have mercy upon us, and incline our hearts to keep this law. Remember that thou keep holy the Sabbath day. Six days shalt thou labour and do all that thou hast to do. But the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord thy God. In it thou shalt do no manner of work, thou and thy son and thy daughter, thy manservant and thy maidservant, thy cattle and the stranger that is within thy gates. For in six days the Lord made heaven and earth, the sea and all that is in them, and rested the seventh day. Wherefore the Lord blessed the seventh day, and hallowed it. Lord, have mercy upon us, and incline our hearts to keep this law. Honour thy father and thy mother, that thy days may be long in the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee. Lord, have mercy upon us, and incline our hearts to keep this law. Thou shalt do no murder. Lord, have mercy upon us, and incline our hearts to keep this law. Thou shalt not commit adultery. Lord, have mercy upon us, and incline our hearts to keep this law. Thou shalt not steal. Lord, have mercy upon us, and incline our hearts to keep this law. Thou shalt not bear false witness against thy neighbour. Lord, have mercy upon us, and incline our hearts to keep this law. Thou shalt not covet thy neighbour's house, Thou shalt not covet thy neighbour's wife, nor his servant, nor his maid, nor his ox, nor his ass, nor anything that is his. Lord, have mercy upon us, and write all these, thy laws, in our hearts, we beseech thee. So let us pray. Almighty and everlasting God, we are taught by thy holy word that the hearts of kings are in thy rule and governance, that thou dost dispose and turn them as it seemeth best to thy godly wisdom. We humbly beseech thee so to dispose and govern the heart of Elizabeth, thy servant, our queen and governor, that in all her thoughts, words and works, she may ever seek thy honour and glory, and study and, preserve to, and, and study to preserve thy people committed to her charge, in wealth, peace and godliness. Grant this, O merciful Father, <coughs> <clears throat> for thy dear Son's sake, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. <clears throat> so the collect for today, the sixth Sunday of Easter. O Lord, from whom all good things do come, grant to us, thy humble servants, that by thy holy inspiration we may think those things that be good, and by thy merciful guiding may perform the same, through our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. So we're going to listen now to our first reading. The 
The reading is taken from Acts 10, verses 44 to 48. While Peter was still speaking these words, the Holy Spirit came on all who heard the message. The circumcised believers who had come with Peter were astonished that the gift of the Holy Spirit had been poured out even on Gentiles. For they heard them speaking in tongues and praising God. Then Peter said, Surely no one can stand in the way of their being baptised with water. They have received the Holy Spirit just as we have. So he ordered that they be baptised in the name of Jesus Christ. Then they asked Peter to stay with them for a few days. This is the word of the Lord. Would you stand for the gospel reading? <clears throat> Holy Gospel is written in the 15th chapter of the Gospel according to St. John, beginning at verse 9. As the Father has loved me, so have I loved you. Now remain in my love. If you keep my commands, you will remain in my love just as I have kept my Father's commands and remain in his love. I have told you this so that my joy may be complete, that, that my joy may be in you and that your joy may be complete. My command is this, love each other as I have loved you. Greater love has no one than this, to lay down one's life for one's friends. You are my friends if you do what I command. I no longer call you servants because a servant does not know his master's business. Instead, I have called you friends, for everything that I have learned from my Father I have made known to you. You did not choose me, but I chose, me, chose you, and appointed you, that you may go and bear fruit, fruit that will last, and so that whatever you ask in my name, the Father will give. This is my command, love each other. Praise be to thee. Remain standing as we say together the words of the Creed. <clears throat> I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten, not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven, and was incarnate by the Holy Ghost of the Virgin Mary, and was made man, and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried, and the third day he rose again, according to the Scriptures, and ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of the Father, and he will come again with glory to judge both the quick and the dead, whose kingdom shall have no end. And I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Lord and giver of life, who proceedeth from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who spake by the prophets. And I believe one Catholic and apostolic church, I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Please do take us. So may I speak in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Love is a multi-billion dollar industry these days. Whether it's the millions of cards that are bought on Valentine's Day or the thousands of love songs churned out in the charts or the uh, box office successes of romantic uh, comedies in the movies or the millions, probably billions, made by the wedding industry each year. Love is a commodity that is worth an awful lot. I think the reason why love is such a big inter industry is because it's something that all of us value. Everyone wants to experience love, whether that's romantic love or friendship or 
parenthood, or love for country, or love for your favourite sports team. Love is something that we all need. And that is because we are made in the image of one who is love. Jesus teaches his disciples to remain in his love. At first glance, that seems a little bit of an odd thing to say. How do you remain in someone's love? Either they love you or they don't. Well, that's not what Jesus is saying. Remaining in Jesus' love isn't about whether Jesus will keep on loving us or not. It's about us choosing to pass on that love to other people. <coughs> Jesus then goes on to say this, that to remain in his love, we have to keep his command. And his command is this, to love one another as I have loved you. So remaining in Jesus' love is about continuing to receive his love, which is freely and constantly poured out, and then in turn giving that love to other people. <clears throat> I like to imagine Jesus' love as a bit like a gushing spring of water, fresh water in the desert. Without this water, you will die of thirst in the desert, so you have to stay close to it and to continually drink from it, to, to stay alive and to live. And I think that's a little bit like how it is with Jesus' love. His love is being constantly poured out, but it's only if we remain in his love, allowing his love to change us and to, to guide us, that we will be able to love other people. So what does love look like? Is it all hearts and roses and warm fuzzy feelings? Well, not really. Real love looks like this. It looks like Jesus laying down his life on the cross. Real love is bloody, it's hard work, and it can cost us everything. Greater love has no one than this, to lay down one's life for one's friends. This verse is often read during Remembrance uh, Sunday to uh, reflect on the sacrifice of the war dead. Except that this isn't what this verse is all about. The war dead were brave men and women who should be remembered, but they did not give their lives in the same way that Jesus gave his life. The soldier dies for his king and his country. But the Son of God died not just for his country, but for his enemies, and indeed for the whole world. So what does this look like for us in our everyday lives? Well, it means putting others first and ourselves last. It means not choosing what is easiest or maybe an advantage for us. The reality is that most of us put ourselves first and often we don't even realise it. I don't know if you've watched on TV the BBC comedy Ghosts. It's um, set in a haunted house where the new owner of the house can see the resident ghost after she had a near-death experience. All of the ghosts come from different times in history, and one ghost is a disgraced Tory MP from the 1990s called Julian. And when he and he's often bargaining with the other ghosts for something, and he comes up with the line constantly, "Well, what's in it for me then?" Something that my children often parrot back to me when I tell them to tidy their room. What's in it for me? That's pretty much the unspoken philosophy of humanity. You scratch my, my back, and I'll scratch yours. The real truth is that real love expects nothing in return. But if you want to know what real Christ-like love looks like, then think of someone that you dislike, or someone who has hurt you, and then pray for them. When you pray for them, when you wish them neither harm nor comeuppance, when you care about what happens to them, when you do something for them without expecting anything in return, even when they don't deserve it, well, this is love. It's incredibly hard, and anyone who tells you otherwise probably hasn't understood what real love requires. This is the kind of love that was modelled by Jesus on the cross. None of us deserves to have Jesus die for us, yet God in Jesus chose to do this so that we might live, not just on earth, but for all eternity. He chose us and he died for us. He gave up, gave up everything for us. Even if you were the last person standing on earth, he would still have gone to the cross for you. And what makes this even more remarkable is that all of us, through our sin, were deserving of death. The whole of humanity, including me and you, were locked in this death spiral of sin. And through our rebellion, we, and all human beings have become enemies of God. 
And that is what real love looks like. Giving up everything, even your life, to save your enemy. Despite all our failings, our imperfections and our sin, God loved us enough that in Jesus he came to die for us. He chose us, as it says in verse 16. But more than that, he chose us and then he appointed us to go out and to bear fruit. And what does it mean to bear fruit? Is it that we've shared our faith with others and brought other people to faith? Is this our charitable work? Is it going to church a lot? Well, no. Our fruit is not what we do, it's who we are in Christ. It is the work of becoming love, of becoming more like Jesus. 1 Corinthians 13 is most often read at weddings, but it actually has really nothing to do with marriage at all. It's actually about how to behave with fellow Christians. It was written to a church in Corinth where they were divided and where they were falling out with each other. In it, Paul says this. He says, if I speak in the tongues of men, and of angels, but do not have love. I am only a resounding gong or a clanging cymbal. And if I have the gift of prophecy and can fathom all mysteries and all knowledge, and if I have a faith that can move mountains, but do not have love, I am nothing. If I give all I possess to the poor and give over my body to hardship that I may boast, but do not have love, then I gain nothing. Everything we do and achieve in life is meaningless if we do not do it in love. Now, love does not mean being a doormat or giving people what they want. That is not love either. Sometimes love requires a tough conversation or even to allow people to face the consequences of their actions. A parent who does not discipline their child is not being loving. But it's what's in our hearts that really matters. If we discipline or challenge out of love, um, if we suffer out of love, if we care out of love, then that's all that really matters. And that is what remaining in Jesus and obeying his command is all about. Love God and love your neighbour. This is the heart of what it means to follow Jesus. This is what it means to be fruitful. And we will only bear true and lasting fruit if we start with love. So shine before men, that they may see your good works, and glorify your Father which is in heaven. So we're going to come to God now with our prayers. Blessed are you, Heavenly Father, who through your Son has revealed your great love for us, and in his resur resurrection gave us a friend and a saviour. We rejoice in your presence this day, in the joy and freedom of the children of God. As you have called us to be friends, to reveal your love and the joy of your presence. We come today with sorrow for the divisions and disunity we see in our lives and in the world this day. We pray that the divisions we see within our community may be healed and our well-being restored. Lord, in your mercy. Heavenly Father, we bring before you today the people of India and Brazil and all countries where COVID-19 seems to be outstripping people's ability to cope with its effects. We pray that the world will come together in generous solidarity and bring help to the helpless and struggling, whoever and wherever they might be. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. We 
pray for the people of this country as we begin to move beyond lockdown. May we make the right decisions and work together to bring healing and hope. We ask for your blessing upon all who have given so generously of themselves to help others during a time of anxiety, sickness and isolation. Lord, in your mercy, 